Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is not a review of Star Number Four. <laughs> it was gonna be, and then I just found other more interesting stuff to talk about, which is almost anything. So here's Iron Sights One and Two. Yes, you can print and distribute books during these trying times. Uh, and so it's uh, my books surrounded by an amazing collection of Frank Miller comics. That is, oh, this is awesome stuff. Here's uh, Framed. I don't know what this is called. Obviously, it's not a flat picture. Um, but there's some three dimensionality dimensionality to the the floppies or the trade paperbacks or the graphic novels. So tell me what this is called. I love this stuff. This is an awesome uh, picture from uh, Singapore, and here is one from jolly old England, as you can tell from the plugs. Um, so anyway, I was going to review Star Number Four, um, but the most memeable thing about this was the men with gynomastia what is it called gynocomastia or whatever it is man boobs this is a man this these are men with man boobs but i've covered that a million times the story was super duper boring it was basically hey uh can you stop murdering me long enough to become best frenzy so i think the best part was this i think it's uh felipe andrade he's got um he does some art right here in the middle it's like the flashback and it is he's so freaking good it's just amazing art but then we get this like this just generic like advertising marketing storyboard art now here's the funny thing i i hate this i hate switching up a story even if it's flashbacks i hate this but Modern readers have been conditioned that it's kind of normal. I've even had pros suggest they're like, hey man, I can't do that whole story. So why don't me and someone else switch back and forth? I go, I go, no. To me, in the 80s and 90s, that means somebody died, somebody had a nervous breakdown, somebody totally cracked up under the pressure of a monthly schedule. So that's why I, I like to do like a main story and then backups, because I don't I don't want to have to sub in anyone. Oh hey man, can you can you get someone to finish the story? It's like, no, no, I can't. Um but uh, anyway, uh, before I go on any further, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, we'll give that one a little bit of time. Pandemic, oh boy, I don't, I don't have a lot of uh, RAM on this tablet now, do I? <laughs> so there it is. You open up other things and it, and it subtracts it from the things that were previous. So here is is uh, Expendables Go to Hell. We crossed uh, 220,000. Pandemic uh, comic book. I think I have one more page owed to me. And then there is uh, Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar. So um, uh, two articles. One was um, this image that my buddy sent me and I was trying to find out where he found it. So this is a, I'm just gonna call this straight up propaganda. Stronger together by staying apart. Be like Superman, stay in your fortress of solitude. Yeah, so uh, Superman doesn't have to worry about herd immunity. And also um, he's uh, not human, he's an alien. Uh, humans, human beings, they are social animals, they need social interaction and not freaking zoom teleconferences every freaking second commercial on tv it's like during these trying times and and like it's supposed to be amazing you can talk to people on zoom no no <laughs> no it's like talking when they have the person in prison and then they get to talk to their wife like on a you know with a phone through the plexiglass it's like well that's the same as like being with her at home you're still married you get to talk you get to see her no human beings need to interact and socialize and go to restaurants um uh down here uh, people are actually getting you know pretty normal um and it's basically old people are wearing masks and sick people and morbidly obese people are wearing masks everyone else is just kind of getting everyone's very happy you, this, this is not to get that into it They've changed the re reasons we're socially distancing and freaking wearing masks. Every three weeks, it's a different reason. Uh, it's been two months. Uh, the economy is in serious trouble. There's 40 million Americans um, uh, out of work uh, because of this. We got to get back together, for, literally, for the species, for sanity, for the economy, everything. Stop. There's nothing stronger together by staying apart. If you're very, very sick, if you're 82 and you're dying of emphysema, you know it. <laughs> let's let's get you apart. Let's get you quarantined. Everyone else, just start playing baseball. You know, go out, walk around. You know, go talk. Things like that. Um, so he did this. Now Rich is he's rich, and he had to make it somehow this weird like class thing where like 
Superman is rich and he's a celebrity, so he made it like it was it was trash. But they are putting this apparently in all the print editions of uh, newly printed stuff from DC. But let's look at what Stronger Together by Staying Apart has done to the industry. Oh, it, it, it destroyed it because just like with humans, COVID basically only kills people who are almost already dead, you know, on death's door. Um, so 2020 will look very different for publishers and comic shops alike. Uh, and it starts really boring. It talks about, you know, uh, a, a you know, large company buying a smaller one in, in Massachusetts. Um, uh, and uh, I think that's why he was explaining why he got confused with that one in, in Missouri. Um, so then he says, uh, this is where you actually get to it. I am aware that there are high level discussions all over the place right now over which comic book publisher may buy another. Some are seen as more vulnerable right now, such as IDW, Valiant, Aspen, and many more. Those with big name financial muscle behind them, such as Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Oni, and Boom, and Splato, are seen as safe, whether that is true or not. But there is also the idea that they could also be in the market to buy themselves. So here's the deal. Companies buy other companies and it's almost always awkward and weird and it never leads to like, so Marvel bought Malibu because they wanted their digital coloring process. Uh, DC bought Wildstorm because they wanted some Alan Moore books until he, you know, figured out that trick and he just pieced out. Um, uh, and, uh, they wanted Jim Lee, so they bought Wildstorm. And then you've seen what they've done with Wildstorm. Not really very much. Um, it's not about, you know, IDW buying Valiant. Um, it's about someone who actually wants to make comics by an IDW. It's about someone who wants to buy comics and not just endlessly chase after TV deals for decades like Aspen does. Um, uh, and uh, Valiant, again, is, is all they... Oh, oh you know... It's a, uh, we're gonna get Rebel Wilson to play um, the faith. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mail that, you know, idea. Email that back to you know 2013 when that would have been like the front page of Entertainment Weekly. Um, um, but one, but what would one get for one's money? Most comics publishers used to have value in their intellectual properties, but these days most new successful IP is owned by the creators. Publishers have enviable licenses for some properties, but those licenses are time limited. In some cases, what may be bought is company goodwill and brand name equity. <laughs> okay, so I was watching Shark Tank, and uh, I, I always hate the ones where it's a beverage or food. Because basically what happens is they're like, why am I buying a recipe for gumbo? Like. That's, I'll buy that recipe, I'm not gonna buy the company. And all of a sudden it's like, I'm homeless. You're like, oh shit. So they usually try to throw some like emotional blackmail onto it at the end. And the sharks are like, oh God, Jesus. Um, but uh, one was a guy was selling like, uh, you know, not diet soda, but like less sugar. And <laughs> the idea was good, but the sharks tasted it. And they didn't like, most of them didn't like, well, all of them didn't like all the taste. Most of them only like one or two. And then the guy was really poor. He had ridiculous amounts of inventory for like this bad tasting soda. And so the older lady who's not Lori, because any woman on shark, anyone on the world who's not Lori Grenier doesn't matter. It's, obviously, that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love Lori. She's my favorite shark. Then they have that older lady who I always forget her name and, and I, I don't like her at all. But she starts like browbeating this new guy who's from the beverage space, as he keeps saying. And she's like, well, you can make billion dollar properties. And this guy wants to sell, you know, sugar free soda. Why don't you help him? And he's like, I'd be doing all the work. Like, what do I get? An okay-ish name and a guy with $600,000 of unsold soda that doesn't taste good? Like, no. And she was like really like aggressively telling him like, do it, do it, do it. Because she wants, sometimes they do half season, you know, things they don't believe in that much, but they do a little. So he's like, no, I'd be doing everything. So you're supposed to buy, you know, IDW, which doesn't have a lot of licenses itself. You know, it just has, you know, licenses with Hasbro, um, but they don't have a lot. So you're just going to buy it for the name, which has been tarnished and destroyed as, you know, this joke 
sad sack, you know, uh, Gil from Simpsons company that, you know, oh, <laughs> uh, so, um, in some cases, okay, there is also the fear that any such purchase publisher may be stripped of what IP and licenses it has, absorbed into the main publisher with offices and personnel drops. So yeah, so we saw that last uh, year where Lion Forge and Oni merged and then a bunch of people got laid off. And the hilarious thing, but it is one of them that, you know, that totally put the, the new company on blast is uh, it's a woman who is, um, uh, I think she's mixed black. And then she started calling Lion Forge racist, and it's like all black guys from St. Louis. Um, but yeah, and anytime you have a merger, you're going to lay people off. That's one of the reasons you do it. You're like, you know, you've got an accounting section, and we have. Why should we both have them? Then we can, you know, it'll, we'll have less expenses. Um, but yeah, so even if you have like a license, you know, when you sell it, the, the the person who you know gave you the license, they can be like, oh, I don't like these new owners, and pull it. And then what did you buy besides the name of IDW? Um, uh, and this this actually happened um, with uh, Antarctic. There was there's like brief talks or like with all the stress, you know, from the tortious interference. Uh, one of the owners like basically broached the ideas like, would you like to buy it? So I was like, oh, let me talk to some people. And they're like, what are you buying besides the name of a continent <laughs> and like not much more? Um, uh, so there continue to be discussions regarding one comic book store doing dealings with other stores to create a chain. Rather than the acquisition frenzy that I had previously heard, there seems to be more of an attempt to create a large group of co-branded stores, franchising out the IP of the name from city to city. Jeez, nobody gives a hell about that. Um, oh, so this is just a way for him to throw some shade onto DCBS and Midtown for becoming distributors. Um, but it may need the placating of many retailer egos to work out. Brian Hibb. Um, this would be an inside job rather than someone coming from the outside. Okay, so this is, okay, so please pay attention here. <laughs> if you weren't before. Until we have a vaccine, if we even get one, retail behavior is going to have to change. The entire comic book store vibe may have to change as social distancing continues. Bullshit. Okay, so just to talk about the elephant in the room, comics is a hobby for socially awkward people. It's not the Big Bang Theory. We're not walking up to like strangers and you're like, oh, you're reading oh, Quicksilver? The Flash is much better speed-based hero. No. Every <laughs> socially awkward penguin comic book nerds were already socially distancing. Uh, th that's like you never wanted to be like the guy like right next to the other guy because then you're kind of pressuring him um especially if like you go to like half price books and you got that tiny little island with like the um the old comics it actually gets really stressful when someone else gets onto it because if they're going through the 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 long boxes quicker than you are they're going to catch up to you oh i got to make these decisions oh boy it's a lot of pressure no no nothing has to change the stores need to reopen, and they need to buy books based on what people want. Publishers need to produce series based on what people want. Not putting Star out there, and nobody gives a damn about it. Not rebooting Captain Marvel for the ninth time, because you didn't have the rights to Invisible Girl or Storm, and you kind of had like a, a short bench of, you know, good female characters to base a franchise around. Um, but um, also, a vaccine is not a cure. Uh, and those take years, uh, uh, but no retail. The, the retail behavior has to change. Is you know people like Brian Hibbs, people who make it uncomfortable for people they think aren't their customers but actually are. Uh, for you know publishers hiring frauds and clowns and people who hate the fans and openly talk about how they hate the fans. That's what needs to change. Um, a percentage of former regular customers. And collectors will drop comics entirely because of the break. Well, that's kind of funny because that's not what you were saying a couple weeks ago. That's what I was saying a couple weeks ago. The industry is already planning some massive moves to get their attention and bring them back. No, no. Shut up. You're talking about the Gail Simone. That's not a plan. There are long boxes full of previous DC Marvel, you know, crossovers. Um, but some will inevitably be lost. In the process... Familiar names will disappear or be reintegrated into others. And from all of this chaos, 
something new. <laughs> Whatever. So this is this is bad. This is the stupidest thing for a, a an industry that needs people to go to stores to say to people, stay in your fortress of solitude. No. Get out. You're a social animal. There are reasonable precautions you can take. Um, uh, you have to live in, in the world. I don't know why everyone just thought they were immortal until like two months ago, but you were plot twist. You were always going to die <laughs> and staying inside your house for the rest of your life and being afraid of everyone that is not living. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Give to the GoFundMe, the Patreon and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar pandemic comic book expendables go to hell and i will have more uh new and uh something new comic reviews and comic industry analysis up all this week thanks bye